Welcome to another edition of Cadet Chat. Uh, I'm your host, Dr. Kasorik, and we have some very special guests today from our transportation department. To my le uh, closest left, we have Matt Schultz, our director of transportation, and we also have Anita Marpizi, who is a driver trainer uh, for our transportation uh, department. So um, something that's not always in the forefront of the organization, but is one of the most important uh, types of work that we do is making sure that students get to school uh, safely and we return them home safely. So there have been some changes in the transportation department over the last couple of years. And I thought it'd be a great time to check in and celebrate uh, the great work that's happening because the transportation department is certainly one of our points of pride. So uh, I'm going to hit Matt first with a couple questions. Yeah. So uh, talk to us a little bit about what's happening in uh, the transportation department. Well, there's always a lot of stuff happening over there, um, whether it's recruiting new drivers, getting ready for the new upcoming school year. Um, you know, we at this point in the year, believe it or not, we're already looking to 23, 24, what that routing is going to look like in terms of uh, routes for the five different buildings that we uh, transport to. We also transport to about 30 schools off campus for special needs programs and or private parochial. So it's a big, heavy lift. So we're getting towards that. That's this time of the year. Um, always looking for new drivers, new recruitment efforts. Uh, those types of things. Awesome. Uh, Nita, so you're a driver trainer. Correct. T tell us a little bit of what your day looks like. Well, it, every day is different for me. <laughs> okay. I'm also a contracted sub driver, so I jump on where I'm needed. Mm -hmm. And then I come back and we have six trainers. Yep. And we all work together to train our new employees um, first to get their CDL. And then after they do that, we train them to be a school bus driver. Oh, great. So the process from start to finish. So if I was a community member, I was considering uh, applying to join the team. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the process uh, to become a bus driver from CDL as you work with your team of trainers to get folks to a place where they're out on the road delivering children? There is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot more than people think. It takes average, maybe I'm going to say 10 weeks mm -hmm. to get your CDL and then probably three to four more before you're officially ready to go out onto your own. Yep. Right. Yeah, yes. just to add to that, I think um, recently we've had a lot of federal mandates that we've had to do through the Department of Transportation. Anita works largely on that. So that adds, you know, probably 70 to 80 hours of mm -hmm. documented training that we have to do in addition to local Hilton stuff. But it all starts with your permit. So if anyone is interested, you uh, can come and see us. We'll give you some, some CDL manuals for your permit. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a four-part test, uh, and you can go to any DMV to get your permit, and then right away we get you on a bus to get used to that vehicle. Great. So I can uh, I can tell our audience that last summer, as a part of our leadership retreat, uh, you guys were kind enough to allow the uh, administration to participate in a uh, school bus rodeo, if you yep. will. Yep. And, and rodeo is not rodeo, like riding a horse. <laughs> yes. It's like road. Yes. Um, and it was so fascinating. I think some people, uh, I think everybody, uh, grew a greater understanding of what it means to drive yeah. a bus. Yeah. Um, so there were there were some of us who were like, wow, this is a it's an automatic transmission. I think I can do this. <laughs> yep. And then there were others that were like, holy cow, yeah. uh, we have just uh, so much gratitude for the work that the transportation department uh, does. So, you know, what is your thoughts on uh, operating a, a motor vehicle that size? And, and what are things that um, maybe as uh, community members are seeing our uh, buses out there, uh, what's helpful for our drivers to keep our students safe? Um, I'll, I'll start with that, and then Anita, you can jump in. I think the vehicle itself, um, I mean, I love driving the vehicle. I don't have to drive that much, thankfully, here. We have a, a, a good staff of drivers and attendants. Um, but when I do, I, I mean, I love driving the vehicle. Um, you know, throw in 40 students behind you, and it changes <laughs> a lot in terms of what your responsibilities are on the road versus with your kids. Um, but I think the, the m number one thing, and we see it not only in our community here, but across the state and the nation is, um, you know, the push for stricter laws or an awareness around stopping with reds. And it unfortunately happens. It's a huge safety concern. Um, there's always news articles about um, drivers that don't stop when school bus reds are out. And usually, you know, there's not injuries or fatalities, but sadly there are sometimes. And I think that's a push that mm -hmm. everybody just has to be aware of um, to really hone in and Making sure that, you know, we tell our drivers all the time to be the most defensive driver on the road, but if everybody had that mindset, everybody would be a lot safer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that? We do a lot of driving, or excuse me, a lot of training with mm -hmm. SAFE. 
Okay. Make sure your, your vehicles are safe. Make sure that you know that they're stopping. I see you, you see them. Mm -hmm. Before we cross, they yeah. know the danger signal. If you hear the horn, they go back to where they start. We teach our train or our new drivers to be aware of everything, not mm -hmm. just we focus in on not focusing. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's um, awesome. So we mm -hmm. do have a lot of great Yeah, a lot trainers. of detail and a lot of training. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to your point, some people might ask, why does it take 10 weeks to train? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that you're sharing right now the reason why, because it's such a detailed and important job. We have to make sure that we clearly understand what we need to do yes. to keep everybody safe. Yeah. So yeah. thank you and thank you to the other trainers yeah. as well for making that happen. Now, um, I. I think it's a bragging point for the district. I know that we're one of the first districts in Monroe County to work with the county legislature mm -hmm. uh, to put in some. We, we were at the forefront of the stop arm cameras. Yep. We kind of hit a hiccup right there yep. because I think it provided much additional safety for individuals. But now there's actually uh, a relationship with the county. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to us a little bit about what that looks like and what's going to be happening? Yeah, for sure. So Bus Patrol is a company that came in and essentially contracted... Um, a camera system and uh, community awareness around the notion of you know cars passing reds on school buses. So we looked at it. I talked to my supervisor, talked with with you about the the process of kind of uh, entering into a contract with Bus Patrol through the county, and essentially Bus Patrol free to all community members. It's not it doesn't cost us anything. We'll outfit our buses with cameras that will uh, basically create a a snapshot or a thirty second video when a vehicle does pass a school bus with reds on. That video gets sent to the county. The county 100% determines if it's uh, if a ticket is determined or not. We don't even know if it's happened. We are totally out of the loop. Um, and people will get a fine. Uh, I don't know exactly what the fine will be in terms it's $250. of- It's yeah, $250. $250 for the first offense. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really am excited about is that it gives us a lot of data. Uh, so we will be able to get monthly called heat zones. And we'll be able to see in these areas, here's where it's happening. Uh, we can then adjust routes and bus stops to make sure that they're not in those areas so that our kids that are getting on and off buses or a bus routes are in the safest possible areas. To, um, and so that's what I really am looking forward to. Um, so there's a couple big benefits. One is it's no cost to the district or to the community members. Um, and there's a 30-day, um, basically like a public awareness push mm -hmm. that there will be a lot of uh, information around out there. And if someone passes reds in the first 30 days, that warning period, they'll get a letter that says, hey, this is what happened. If it occurs, you know, after the 30-day period, then other things would be put in place. That's great. Yeah. Well, I appreciate both of your uh, open-mindedness to uh, working together to get to that place where we can ensure, yeah. uh, continue to ensure and build our safety practices. Of course. So along safety practices, uh, I'll ask both of you, uh, what uh, other new initiatives or practices are taking place in the transportation department? Anything you can think of? New ones? Or refined ones? Well, what are some things you're building? Matt already spoke about all of the new federal regulations, yep. sure. which yep. puts a lot more emphasis on stuff, and mm -hmm. we go over it a lot more instead of just once or twice. Mm -hmm. yep. We have to mm -hmm. go over it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> There's right. classroom, there's on the road, there's videos we have. Yep. Um, so it's just re repetitive. Yeah, that's yep. the newest one. Yeah. It's, it's the entry-level driver training for people okay. who are aware of, of that through the FMCSA. Um, but I think the other thing to consider, and this I was going to touch upon this in a previous question, is just when you get on the road with kids and you're 19A certified, the training never ends. I mean, New York State Ed requires us to do three trainings a year. You every year have a driver physical to assess your health. Every year you have, you're in the pool basically for random drug and alcohol testing. Um, every other year there's another road test that we give in-house. It's mm -hmm. called the behind the wheel exam. There's a written exam. Um, there's a defensive driver review every year for every driver. And it doesn't matter if it's somebody like me who doesn't drive that much or it's someone who drives every single day. So I think that's a lot of the safety aspects that are just ongoing, always continuously happening. Um, so we have people that, you know, do a lot of that stuff for us in-house. Um, the only other thing I'll touch upon is we've, through our safety committee at our transportation building, we've looked at different things. A, a great example about that before I came here was the stop or the... Um, the light that was put in by the high school. Mm -hmm. So the safety committee, I think, worked with the high school and a mm -hmm. couple of other agencies and that got put in there to ease the traffic flow and to give a little bit more control there. That safety committee is still doing a lot of work, notably with students. So, you know, one of the big pushes they're doing is uh, working with school safeties 
at arrival and dismissal practices to make mm -hmm. sure that they're as safe as possible for kids getting on and off buses. Awesome. So I hear about this uh, coffee chat with Matt. Tell me a little bit about it. <laughs> so the coffee chat with mm -hmm. Matt, believe it or not, came out of just something that I happened to see on either YouTube or somewhere along the line. I was like, that's a cool idea. You know, just a leadership trait. Um, I try to be accessible. Transportation is a very unique day for bus drivers and bus attendants. You know, they're it's busy from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then it's really busy from 1 to 4.30. So I said, hey, I want to be accessible. So once a month, it's kind of an open forum where, mm -hmm. you know, we provide donuts and coffee to everybody in our break room and anyone can come in and ask whatever they want, give whatever suggestion they think um, is on their mind. And we've had some really good discussions come out of that. Uh, recently, it's been a lot about electric buses. Um, you know, what does the electric bus push look like, battery life, those types of mm -hmm. things. Um, one of the other things that came out of it was looking at our new bus purchase and what um, different add-ons we would want on buses. So there's, I mean, you name it, it's like buying a car. You can have all sorts of different um, trims and everything else. So I kind of ran through that coffee chat with Matt, different ideas around that. So essentially, it's just a way for me to hopefully stay connected with mm -hmm. people in the building, provide them a, an opportunity to just sit where it's very informal and there's no high stakes or anything. And we can just kind of kick ideas around and come up with, with good stuff. So Great. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Uh, Anita, so you're training some new drivers. Correct. Tell us how it's going. It's going great. Great. They're doing very, very well. Oh, that's great yes. to hear. Yes. Uh, how many drivers are you training right now? Right now we have two in the process of getting their permit and one in the process of going out on her own. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... Yep. This is a very slow time right now. Yeah, we've we hired, have been... Uh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, we fired about six full-time drivers in the last six months. Mm -hmm. And we have, mm -hmm. uh, like Anita said, two or three that are in different stages of working towards mm -hmm. their, either their permit or their license right now. So, Well, what's the the largest number of drivers you've been training at uh, any at certain the time of the year? Oh, my God. What was that? We probably had eight or nine at yeah. once uh, a oh. couple months ago. So it's it's actually really odd right now that I have some free time this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the first yeah. time in probably two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's been really, really good that's great mm -hmm. and i know that um you know i've had some other meetings with matt to discuss where we are with uh mm -hmm. vacancies mm -hmm. and we're in a real good place mm -hmm. and we continue to work on building our stable of mm -hmm. substitutes and yep. uh, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that because i don't think people always understand the impact that would have on our overall organization mm -hmm. if we didn't have uh, enough bus drivers or mm -hmm. subs um so one of, the, one of the toughest things, I think, to put in context with people who are going to see this, I worked in schools for a, a number of years, and, you know, when we were short on building subs, there were ways to kind of get around that. You could mm -hmm. combine classes, an administrator could go cover a class for a short period of time, but on school buses, you're either a certified school bus driver on our state roster or you're not, and we cannot and will never have anyone on there that's not certified. You mm -hmm. just can't do it, so finding and keeping really reliable subs is a key to filling all of our runs each day. Mm -hmm. um, because yes, we might have one unfilled run right now that we fill every day, but there's always gonna be absences for a variety of reasons. So we're lucky that we have a really good list of subs who help us out. A lot of, a lot, a lot of retirees who have come back to help mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. It's been great. So if I'm interested in driving bus, I could drive bus anywhere, right? There seems to be a mm -hmm. lot of vacancies for individuals to become bus drivers or mm -hmm. work in the transportation department. Yep. Yep. Why do I wanna come work at Hilton? We're the best. <laughs> I like it. Very yeah. convincing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. What, what does it mean to be the best for you two? Honestly, a lot of people who have gone and either worked for other districts and have come over or even go interview and come back to us, they say that we are family oriented and our training program is top notch and our staff is top notch. Mm -hmm. And that just draws them in more. Mm -hmm. We have people who come from Chi Lai and East around mm -hmm. who come and drive for Hilton mm -hmm. because of our atmosphere is yeah. so nice. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And Anita nailed it. I mean, that's what I was going to say. It's the soft skills. It's we do luncheons a lot. You know, we have probably have one each month probably where we just get the staff together. And I think when people feel a part of a team and they have some input and some buy-in, that goes a long way. Because like you mm -hmm. said, they could go to a different district and right. and work as well. Um, I think HR here has also done a really good job in terms of some different incentives on that end of it, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily what, what we kind of do on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think that's a role as well. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think at, at a baseline, compensation is important. Mm -hmm. We all understand yeah. that. But I think, Anita, you really hit on that. 
Um, what's really going? I want to be happy at my right. job. Yeah, I want to yeah. enjoy. Right. I want to feel the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. um, I want to feel taken care of. I want to feel safe and all of those things. Yeah. So yep. the environment that you and your colleagues have been able to create uh, is just really outstanding. So I appreciate both of you for your leadership with that. Yep. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you guys as individuals, if you're comfortable. Sure. So um, any influences on you as you grew up and, and how they impact you in the leadership positions you have right now? That's a pretty interesting question. I think um, as I've gotten a little bit older and reflected on some stuff and kind of the path where I have gotten here has not mm -hmm. been one that I think is pretty traditional. You know, I was a teacher for a while, assistant principal for a while, and then landed <coughs> in transportation. I, don't, I would have to just go back to my dad, to be honest. Like, I think, mm -hmm. I think about my dad and he's like the quintessential father, mm -hmm. you know, very fair, um, leads through action. You know, we'll, we'll say things and when he says stuff, people listen because he doesn't mm -hmm. talk just all the time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, high level quality, his nickname at work was Quality Chuck. Um, <laughs> so it. yeah, I think, I think that's instilled in me and mm -hmm. you know, my brothers and stuff like that. So I, if I had to think back to any one particular point, it's probably him. In terms of education, I had just a phenomenal teacher at my high school that really influenced me and a lot, a lot of others to enter the education field at that point. So that probably started my path to, you know, sitting where I am now. Well, we're, we're so thankful for your dad and we're thankful <laughs> for uh, your mentors who yep. uh, helped you find your way to Hilton. We're very mm -hmm. thankful. Yeah. Anita, how about you? Who, who's made some impacts in your life? My grandmother was a bus driver for Gates Child Eye way back in the day. Wow. <laughs> I know. Um, I found that out later on in life. Cool. So it's in your blood. It's in our blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's a great job. For, I was a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. going through a divorce. It was the perfect job. I could be home with my children. Mm -hmm. when they were not in school and it was just the perfect job and that's how I landed into it and just kind of working my way hopefully upward and how long have you been with the district I believe 19 years 19 years yeah. wow that's awesome and I love yeah. it I really do oh that's I fantastic. love coming to work so well when you guys aren't uh working hard for the district what do you like to do in your free time uh for me it's I, I love to be outside I mean it's uh I go hiking um I have two daughters. We this past week went to Letchworth and did a bunch of hikes there and saw a lot mm. of stuff. So for me, that's kind of the things that I enjoy getting in nature. And that's how I kind of de-stress. I mean, everybody has to have something that they do. Um, so that's probably the biggest one off the top of my head for me. Great. Yeah. Nita? Um, I like to ride my Harley. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yep. Tell us more about the Harley. I want to know more it's about it. It's a beautiful it. it's bike. Nice. It's what made the Levi. What model is it's it? It's a Softail Deluxe. Oh, wow. Very pretty yeah. bike. You'll how long see it over you, there. How long have you been riding? Oh, 2003. Oh, good for you. That's awesome. So a long time, 20 years. What year's your bike? And 11, 2011. 11, nice. Yeah. That's what yeah. I, I feel like uh, the bikes have changed quite a bit. And they I, really have. They're very different. Um, yeah, they so are. very neat. Yeah, so they are. you'll be riding to Letchworth to see the leaves, right? Yes, and we do. Those we rides? do that about twice a year. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fantastic. And I'm going to be a grandma, so I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, you're going to have to get a sidecar, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody at Transportation knows when the weather's better because Anita and a few others bring their Harleys yes. in, and it, you can hear it, and they you yeah. know, show them off. Yeah, and, it's a beautiful sound, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty neat stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Our old boss took it for a ride and filled it in with gas. So. <laughs> there you go. Nice. No pressure. No, no pressure, no pressure yeah. whatsoever. So, uh, well, all right, guys. So you've really given me an opportunity and our community to learn more about the Transportation Department. Um, I know we have many different roles mm -hmm. from trainer to drivers mm -hmm. and mechanics. Uh, if someone was interested in pursuing a career in transportation, what should they, what should they do? What's the advice that you could give them? I think number one is if, you know, come and look at Hilton, we're a great place to be. You can look at our website, um, applications are there. You can give us a call at the transportation office. Um, but I think number one is just to just start to investigate and research what it means to get your CDL permit. Yeah. Cause I think there's, more that goes into that than people realize, mm -hmm. uh, but we will help them get their permit. All the testing and training that we do in our building will take for them from someone who's never driven a bus all the way to being a veteran driver on their bus with kids and just really enjoying their run. Um, so I think you just jump in and give us a call and let us know if you want some help. Oh, you guys nope. nailed it. This is really great. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so once again, I'd like to thank Matt and Anita from Transportation for joining us today. And this concludes another edition of Cadet Chat. Have a great day.